Hi everyone. Welcome back to Chapter 16. In the previous video, we discussed the general concepts behind deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets. In this video, we'll apply the four-step approach introduced in the prior video to the Watson Associates example to calculate Watson's income taxes payable, deferred tax liability, and income tax expense for the three-year period. As a reminder, Watson Associates purchased $60,000 of equipment in early January 2021. Watson estimates that the equipment has a useful life of three years, so it depreciates the equipment using the straight-line method with $20,000 of depreciation expense in each year 2021, 22, and 23. However, tax rules allow Watson to take the entire $60,000 deduction for the cost of the equipment on its 2021 tax return. Watson has a 25% tax rate and pre-tax accounting income of $100,000 in each of those years. Remember that this pre-tax accounting income in the prior video was explained as $120,000 of income before depreciation and income taxes. The $120,000 was reduced in each year by deducting $20,000 of straight-line depreciation expense each year to arrive at $100,000 of book basis pre-accounting income for each year. To determine taxable income, we have to add back to the pre-tax accounting income any depreciation expense in the income statement, then subtract any tax deduction allowed on the tax return. In 2021, taxable income is less than accounting income because depreciation under tax rules is greater than shown in the income statement. Let's walk through the four-step process. Step one, calculate taxes payable. Pre-tax accounting income of $100,000. Add back the $20,000 of straight-line depreciation expense and subtract $60,000 of depreciation expense per the tax return. That's this net $40,000 reduction equals taxable income on the tax return of $60,000 times the 25% tax rate equals income taxes currently payable of $15,000. Step 2. Calculate ending deferred tax liability. On the tax return, we have fully expensed the $60,000 cost of the asset. So for the tax return, we don't get any more depreciation expense in future years. But on the income statement, we get an additional $20,000 of depreciation expense in the year 2022 and in the year 2023. So our deferred tax asset, excuse me, liability amount is $40,000 times the 25% tax rate equals an ending balance in our deferred tax liability of $10,000. So we have to credit the deferred tax liability account by $10,000. I love T accounts. So does the book, and so should you. So step three is a credit to the deferred tax liability to get its balance to move from zero to the $10,000 
credit ending balance that it needs. Step four is to plug income tax expense for the $15,000 credit in the taxes currently payable plus the $10,000 credit to deferred tax liability that it takes to move the balance to its correct ending balance. So Watson's journal entry for its 2021 tax provision is a debit to income tax expense of $25,000, a credit to income taxes payable for $15,000, and a credit to deferred tax liability for $10,000. Income taxes payable for the year 2022 is $30,000. Calculated by taking the pre-tax accounting income and adding back $20,000 of depreciation expense allowed in the financial statements but not allowed on the tax return. So taxable income for 2022 is $120,000 times the 25% tax rate equals currently payable taxes $30,000. That's step one. Step two, calculate the ending balance in the deferred tax liability. In 2023, the only future year that's left in this example we will be allowed a $20,000 deduction for straight line depreciation in the financial statements, but that will not be allowed in the tax return. So we have $20,000 timing difference. At the end of 2022, we have a $20,000 timing difference that will reverse in the future following year, 2023. Multiply that $20,000 timing difference times 25%, and that leaves a $5,000 ending credit balance in the deferred tax liability account. Step three, calculate the change necessary in the deferred tax liability account to move its balance from its beginning balance to its correct ending balance. Well, if it had a $10,000 credit balance to begin with, we have to debit the account $5,000 to get its ending balance down to its correct $5,000 ending balance. Step four, plug the tax account or the tax expense. $30,000 credit to income taxes payable minus a $5,000 debit to deferred tax liability means that income tax expense is $25,000. And here's the journal entry. Debit income tax expense, $25,000. Debit deferred tax liability, $5,000. And credit income taxes payable, $30,000. Watson's accounting in 2023 is very similar to its accounting in 2022. Here's why. Watson's 2023 taxes payable is again $30,000. And there's no deduction for depreciation on this asset in the tax return, even though the income statement reported $20,000 of straight line depreciation. This difference reverses the full deferred tax effect. There is no more deferred tax effect for this asset after the year 2023. So step two, the balance in the deferred tax liability account must be zero at the end of 2023. Step three, calculate the change in the deferred tax liability it had a beginning balance left over from 2022 of $5,000 credit balance. We want its balance to be zero. Therefore, we have to debit the account $5,000 to move its balance from 
a $5,000 credit to a zero balance. Step four, plug the tax expense. Credit taxes payable $30,000, debit deferred tax liability $5,000 means that we're going to debit tax expense $25,000. And here's the journal entry. Debit income tax expense $25,000, debit deferred tax liability $5,000, and credit income taxes payable $30,000. Notice that the deferred tax liability increased in 2021 when the temporary difference originated. Then it decreased in 2022 and 2023 as the temporary differences reversed and has an ending balance after year three. Let's do a concept check problem involving depreciation. At the beginning of 2021, Wyatt Company purchased equipment for $800. The equipment has a four-year useful life, and Wyatt uses the straight-line depreciation method. Under tax laws, Wyatt is able to fully depreciate the equipment for tax purposes in the year of purchase. Wyatt has a tax rate of 25%, as a result of this transaction, Wyatt's tax expense journal entry for 2021 would include a debit to deferred tax liability of $600, B, a credit to deferred tax liability for $600, C, a debit to deferred tax liability for $150, or D, a credit to deferred tax liability for $150. Please, please pause your, slide, your video, do the calculation and choose your answer, and when you finish, come back, start the video again to check your work. The correct answer is D. The income statement depreciation for 2021 is $200. That's the $800 divided by the four years of straight line depreciation. The 2021 tax return depreciation is the full $800. So the temporary difference is $600. Multiply that times the 25% tax rate and your deferred tax liability must be $150. It had a zero balance. What do we have to do to the account to move the zero balance to a $150 credit balance? Well, we have to credit the account for $150, and that's why the answer is D. Let's do another deferred tax problem involving depreciation. Windsor Company started 2021 with a deferred tax liability of $150. At the end of the year, Windsor identifies future taxable amounts of $800. Windsor has a tax rate of 25% and calculates taxes payable will be $120. Windsor's tax expense journal entry will include A a debit to tax expense for $200, B, a debit to tax expense for $170, C, a debit to tax expense for $50, or D, a credit to tax expense for $30. Please pause the video, calculate your answer, and start the video again to check your work. The correct answer is B, a debit to tax expense for $170. And here's how that works. The problem tells us that we started out with a deferred tax liability of $150. 
it says that it identifies future taxable amounts in the amount of $800. So our ending deferred tax liability has to be $200. That's 25% of $800. What do we have to do to move the $150 credit balance to a $200 credit balance? We have to credit the account by $50. It says that taxes payable is $120 plus the $50 that it takes to move the account, the deferred tax liability account balance to its correct balance equals $170 in tax expense. Debit tax expense, $170. Credit taxes payable, $120. Credit deferred tax liability, $50. Well, that's all for this video. In our next video, we'll talk about balance sheet and income statement reporting issues with respect to deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities and income tax expense. See you next time.